All right, y'all, you're locked on Falcons. I'm your host, Aaron Freeman, and today I will be joined by ESPN's Mike Rothstein to talk about Isaiah Oliver's changing role within the Falcons defense and which players are trending up and down as we approach the next round of cuts. You are locked on Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So guys, you know me, I'm Aaron Freeman, been covering the Falcons for many years formerly at falcfans.com rip still going strong on twitter at falcfans and of course the host of this preeminent distinguished locked on falcons podcast you are daily atlanta falcons podcast part of the locked on sports atlanta podcast family and we thank everyone that makes locked on falcons their first listen each and every day Locked on Falcons is free and available in a variety of podcast platforms Monday through Friday, including Apple, Odyssey, Google, Spotify, and also on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to Locked on Falcons on YouTube. Hit that bell. Give us a like and you will get the video version of the podcast the night before the audio drops. So today's episode features Mike Rothstein of ESPN. We're going to talk about Isaiah Oliver getting looks at safety. Uh, we'll also talk about some players that are trending up and trending down as far as their bids to make the roster this year. We'll talk a little bit about um, the upcoming preseason game against the Jets and sort of what our expectations should be. And of course, we'll take a deep dive into Mike Rothstein's uh, insight into the Falcons training camp playlist, which is the most important thing that you guys observe on his uh, daily observations and notes that he puts out there on Twitter after each day of practice. And then at the end of the episode, we'll talk about the Falcons adding wide receiver Keyshawn Johnson and whether or not he can make a real move for the Falcons 53 man roster or practice squad as this summer unfolds. But without further ado, let's jump into that conversation with Mike Rothstein of ESPN right now. All right, y'all, you're locked on Falcons. Of course, I'm your host, Aaron Freeman. And today I'm joined once again by Michael Rothstein. He covers the Atlanta Falcons over at ESPN. You've been checking out his daily observations and notes from training camp. And Mike has uh, been kind enough to join us on today's episode to uh, talk a little bit more about what's going on in Falcons camp as we sort of get into this home stretch run uh, in the middle of the preseason and get geared up for the regular season. But Mike, I want to welcome you back to Locked on Falcons. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Always good to be here. So Mike, I want to jump in talking a little bit about something that you wrote about the last couple of days, which is Isaiah Oliver getting more looks at the safety position. Uh, could you inform the listeners to the best of your knowledge, sort of what exactly that entails? Yeah, right now, I don't think it's a huge deal, but, you know, we're in the middle of camp and everything looks the same. So when you see something different, you're like, oh, wow, that's something different. Both Isaiah Oliver and Arthur Smith have said that they're cross training, trying to make sure he, you know, they are ready in case they would ever need him at safety. Dean Pease likes to have his nickels understand the safety spot, probably because there's some more similarity to what they're being asked to do. We saw that last year when Isaiah Oliver went down, who filled in largely? Richie Grant, who's primarily a safety. And then you would see sometimes, you know, Deron Harmon, Eric Harris, or Jalen Hawkins drop down into that nickel spot. So I think that that is all part of it. This was something they were going to experiment with last year, but then Isaiah Oliver got hurt. So I'm not thinking that this is a full-blown position switch. Isaiah Oliver even said, I, I don't know if I would want that. However, about a year ago at this time, TJ Green moved from safety to corner, and they were saying some of the similar stuff then of cross-training, and then TJ Green became a corner for the rest of his time with the Falcons, which didn't last all that long. I'm not saying Isaiah Oliver's in that same category by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm just saying like, it would not shock me if – they start to consider things. But I think nickel corner is different than slot to outside corner, which is what, or safety to outside corner, which is what they had TJ Green do last year. 
because the positions have similarities. Mike Ford, for instance, the guy who's been playing first team slot corner, has experience at safety as well. So there is that obvious trend line, through line. So that's kind of what I would make of it at this point. Until I see Isaiah Oliver playing safety in a game, you know, or never playing nickel in practice for the 10 or so days that we have left to practice to watch before we never get to see it again, then that's when I'll, I'll start to believe that maybe a full-time position switch might be in the cards. But I think right now it's just they're working him along. The next barrier for him is removing the brace, which he said can happen in 10 or 11 days. So that should be right around the end of camp. Who knows if we see him play this preseason at all. But it's he said he wants to trend towards week one, and that, that's been his goal, week one against New Orleans. So I think that that's where things are maybe still headed. Uh, where that is, what he ends up doing, whether he ends up being the starter or that ends up being Mike Ford at nickel, I think that all honestly remains to be seen. So it, it sounds like this is kind of part of the Falcons sort of strategy because I, I noticed a lot of times watching the film last year uh, and watching the preseason game this past week that they like to sort of do these sort of inverted coverages where they'll drop the nickel cornerback to play that deep cover too. I think that big play uh, down the sideline against the Lions where they had Mike Ford deep on that play was one example of that. So is is this just part of Dean Pease's philosophy and strategy to have every player on the team be comfortable playing multiple positions because given how much he likes to sort of disguise things that's en enhancing the defense yeah 100 percent. and dp said that last year too like that's he doesn't have a free safety or a strong safety at least listed per se because he wants them to be able to play both he wants guys to understand every position if they can at least within their position group if not more so that this is happening again fits very much in line with Dean Pease's overall philosophy. And listen, we all know Dean Pease loves safeties. Like, I mean, that you know, he, he should get a T-shirt. Honestly, like, that, I think it would would benefit him greatly. Okay, okay. Well, we got more to come on today's episode with Mike Rothstein of ESPN, talking a little bit about some players that may be on the rise, or, or maybe some players uh, that are you know maybe trending downward, and we'll get his thoughts on some of those players that he's been observing in camp and in the preseason games uh, over the last few days. So don't touch that dial. As you guys know, the Falcons are in the process this preseason of finding the right people to help their team win this fall. And perhaps you too are looking for the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders this fall. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people that you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach the world's largest professional network of over 800 million people. LinkedIn Jobs helps you spread the word that you're hiring and gives you the simple tools like screening questions to make it easy to focus on the candidates with the just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right candidates that you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So, guys, uh, I want to thank you once again for making Locked On Falcons your first listen each and every day. However you play, get the latest NFL fantasy draft tips from Locked On Fantasy Football and Locked On Dynasty. Uh, plus, starting next week on August 22nd, we're bringing you daily top 10 lists for Locked On's fantasy draft week. Locked On Fantasy Football and Locked On Dynasty available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So here with Mike Rothstein of ESPN and um, I, I know you've talked about this a little bit on your podcast from the perch, uh, which you've been doing great job giving daily updates on training camp. Everybody wants a daily podcast nowadays. Uh, but uh, who are some? <laughs> oh, of the just to be clear, the daily podcast is going away after training camp ends. I, I can't. It's not. I did it during the COVID year when I covered the Lions, but. Uh, no, I, uh, uh, it's going back to twice, maybe three times a week. Once, uh, once open practices end, just you know, <laughs> news flash there. I, I no, the, the daily podcast game, at least unless, unless I get paid for it, 
it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> okay, all right. So I, I can feel a little bit more secure in my position uh, <laughs> moving forward. But uh, you know, you've talked a little bit about some guys that you thought have sort of stood out the last couple of days in camp. Um, you know, who are some of those names that you feel like are enhancing their chances of not only making the roster but also potentially impacting the Falcons later this year? Yeah, I mean, the the first guy is D. Alford. Now, D. Alford, I think, has had a really good week of camp. And I actually asked Arthur Smith about this on, let's say Wednesday, so Tuesday. Again, days, no concept uh, at this point in camp. But I had asked him because one of the things Arthur Smith always talks about is like guys make splash plays and then they get burned for three plays and, and that doesn't get write, written about or that doesn't get seen. So I asked him, like, listen, where, where does D. Alford fit in that continuum for you? And he said, no, listen, D. Alford has shown up and done the work every single day. Yeah, you see the splash plays, but we're seeing it every day. And those plays stack up and add up. And really over the last week, we've seen that. He had an interception in the Wednesday practice before they played the Lions. He had an interception in the game against the Lions. He had an interception on Monday in the open practice. He played really well on Tuesday again. He has had days stacked, and he's to the point now where he's probably probably their last cornerback in if I were to be doing the roster projections. Now, some of that too, Cornell Armstrong goes on injured reserve. He was the guy who was really, in my opinion, still ahead of him, along with the guys that are going to be ahead of him more than likely, which are A.J. Terrell, Casey Hayward, Isaiah Oliver, Mike Ford, Darren Hall. Darren Hall, by the way, has had also had a fantastic training camp, but I think it's not getting as talked about because, like, he was going to be on the team, and, and it's kind of he's for now at least stuck in the position he's in. I think, which is the you know, top reserve. But D. Alford continually makes plays, and that's really something that stood out. Arthur Smith has noted it in terms of the way he's praised him. That, to me, says, hey, he's got a real shot here. Now, he's got 10 days, but I think he's trending in the right direction. Uh, a few other guys who I think potentially are trending in the right direction, Dorian Etheridge, who kind of around this time last year started to show up more and more. That's happening again. He got a lot of reps in that game uh, on Friday, so it seems like they're really giving him a long look. Uh, and then... You know, Kadero Hodge has had a really good camp at receiver. That back end receiver spots, those spots are really wide open. To me, they're one of the few spots on this roster that I, I really have no concept of what I think will happen yet. And he's really, to me, stood out. Does that mean he makes the roster? I don't know, but he's putting himself in a pretty darn good position. At running back, I think that's still way too early to truly know but Kadri Olison I thought had a really good game on Friday night and put himself potentially in a position to win a roster spot but other than Cordero Patterson and Tyler Algier that to me is still a wide open race between Damian Williams, Caleb Huntley, Avery Williams and Kadri Olison now obviously if Avery Williams wins the returner job he's also going to win a roster spot plus Arthur Smith really seems to like Avery Williams as well and like the versatility there so it's it's going to be really interesting to see how they construct this roster because I think the back end of it is they can go so many different directions. Okay. Now you talked about some players on the rise. Are there any players that you're a little concerned with that may be trending in the wrong direction or people might be a little surprised to hear maybe on the roster bubble or potentially a surprise cut uh, later this month? Yeah. I mean, Auden Tate's a guy that, they signed early in the preseason. Some people before they traded for Brian Edwards thought Autumn Tate might end up being a starter for them. Autumn Tate has, to me, has not done a lot. Like he has a couple of splash plays, like we talked about, but he's dropped a bunch of passes during camp. He has largely been on the second field. So what happens during training camp is you have a field with like the first team vets, and then you have a second field, which is UDFAs, rookies. Occasionally, you'll see a vet over there and like rehab players over there. Like Jalen Hawkins was over on the second field the last couple of days as he's been coming back from his ankle injury and, or what seems like it was an ankle injury. Uh, Isaiah Oliver has been over there for a good portion of camp as he's been rehabbing and kind of ramping up. But Auden Tate's been there every day. 
Like I, I don't remember a day where he's been over on the first field. If there was, it was one. Frank Darby with Drake London being out and, and Brian Edwards being out for a little bit. Edwards obviously on Monday night, but Frank Darby's been the one going over the first field, not Auden Tate. To me, that's not a veteran. It's not like Auden Tate's been here for four years and you're like, okay, he's there to teach a little bit and, and get reps. Auden Tate's in his first year in the offense as well. So to me, that is concerning for a guy like Auden Tate. Marlon Davidson, obviously injured right now, has not practiced in a week. I still think he makes the roster, but injuries have been unfortunately a problem for him throughout his career. And at some point, you know, the, it's cliche, but avail sometimes the best ability is availability. And Marlon Davidson just hasn't been that. I know the Falcons really feel like they need to see him and want to see him in this training camp to get a feel of it. But the more time he's out, the more concerned to me that there maybe is and you know, in what's going on. Now, Arthur Smith has said that every player that's hurt right now, they're hoping to have back by the start of the regular season, but we'll see what that looks like. Uh, you know, I don't know with Marlon Davidson. It's a shame, too, because Marlon Davidson was talking early in camp, and he's like, it's the first time I had an offseason that I was didn't have to re you know recover from something. This is great. And then he goes and gets hurt. I think it was like two days after he said that, too. And, you know, some guys, you just feel terrible that that happens to them, but it's unfortunately the reality of teams around the NFL, Aaron. Like, it, you know, and Marlon Davis just feels like that type of guy. And, and when he's healthy, he can be a rotation player for them. I, I don't think he's a starter for them at the moment. I think that that group is pretty locked in with Taquan Graham, Grady Jarrett, and Anthony Rush as their main three, Grady Jarrett being on the end. But if they decide they want to have more speed there, then Marlon Davidson might make sense instead of an Anthony Rush. But You've got other guys who are starting to make their presence known. Jalen Dalton's another guy, going back to your past question, who, you know, showing up over and over again. And to me, it's kind of interesting because that's a guy two weeks ago that, if you remember, got thrown out of that Saturday practice for fighting and throwing a punch. I thought he might get cut because, you know, that's a way to send a message. They don't cut him. And now he's put trending where maybe he ends up making the roster. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> never let them tell you that, you know, scrapping in practice uh, can't lead to some positive things, at least if the player uh, turns it around. Um, last couple of questions I have for you uh, here with Mike Rothstein of ESPN. Uh, you know, it's preseason, but do you at this point, a couple of days out, uh, have some early expectations for Monday night's game against the Jets? Or is this just preseason and any and all expectations should be minimized? I would go with any and all expectations, especially because there's joint practices. So generally coaches, if they get really good work in those two days of joints, and remember they got two days of joints next week too against Jacksonville at home, you get a lot of good work there. Maybe you're not going to play the starties, starters as much because you're getting two days of quality work against other opponents. So those are going to be things to watch. I'm not going to be in New York, unfortunately, so I won't get a sense of what those joint practices are like, but – We'll see what happens. I mean, look at what happened last year with Miami when they, you know, they, they didn't play the starters a ton, a ton. But also Arthur Smith's philosophy was different then because he wasn't playing a lot of starters anyway. He's changed his mind there. And, you know, I think what every starter that was available to play played, even though, you know, you had Kyle Pitts out there for like three snaps and Cordero for one snap. But, you know, he held true to his word there. And frankly, those are types of guys you don't want playing anyway. Look at Drake London. You know, you, and you want Drake London to play, but look at Drake London. He first catch as a professional, even though it doesn't count. He's hurt and out seemingly this week. And, you know, at this point, if I'm the Falcons, I'm just like, hey, you know, I've seen what I need to see from Drake London. If he can practice toward the end of the training camp, great. To me, I think the next time you should see him on a game field would be week one. But that's just me. Now, my last question for you, Mike, is about the most important question that you will ever answer on a podcast is got to ask you about the music stuff, right? Sure. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the music yeah. stuff. It's great. It's my, it's my favorite part of practice. Shazam and I have become very good friends. Okay. That, that was my, my question. It's like, are you just posting the songs that you know off the, the top of the head or are you using Shazam? You got a performance enhancer like Shazam for you. Don't so you? I, I do have a, I, I have a performance enhancing app. Hopefully I'm not suspended for six weeks. Uh, <laughs> that is Shazam. That does help, but I would say probably 70% of the songs I know. I mean, especially when you're venturing into the 80s, early 90s, rock, 
rap. Like that was my youth, my childhood. So I know all of that. You know, when Pour Some Sugar on Me comes on, I don't need to, to Shazam it. When anything Bon Jovi comes on, I don't need to Shazam it. Uh, that's when Metallica comes on, don't need to Shazam it. Uh, also, Dan Campbell, the Lions coach, probably would not need to Shazam it. But like, you know, the, there are other songs, though, that I admit that, yeah, I'm not sure. Or I'll do it to double check, you know, in a lot of cases. I've also learned some new things throughout this now because they've played a few songs a lot during camp. I'm like, oh, I know that song now where the first couple times I'm like, OK, I don't, I know what this is, but I don't know the title. Like, um, like and this is kind of embarrassing, I guess, like Drake Zero to 100, which they've played a ton during camp. Right. I just wasn't positive of the title. I knew the song. I knew it was Drake, but I wasn't positive the exact title of it. So I just sampled it the first time. Now, if I hear it out, I don't even need to. It just goes right into the notes. To be clear, though, that's not all of the songs they play at practice because I'm watching practice and sometimes I'm far away from the music tent that is run by Sarah Hogan, who is one of the members of the staff. So if I'm too far away, Shazam won't pick it up. So sometimes it's that. And sometimes I'm just taking notes or watching a period and I don't get to the Shazam or I'm not sure what the song is. And I don't, if I listen every song, it would be the entirety of my notes. And while some people would love that, probably myself included, I'm guessing the vast majority of people would not be feeling it. That's probably fair. That's probably fair. But uh, so, you know, um come for the football stay for the music uh takes right That's yeah i mean and the gluten-free food suggestions during the season so you know we, we do what we can here We're, we try to be a full service uh entity over on twitter at mike rothstein and over on the podcast at from the perch we do the best we can all right so go ahead plug twitter plug uh from the perch what you got coming down the pipe over yeah at- so twitter and instagram mike rothstein TikTok, which is a new thing for me, I guess. Uh, Mike Rothstein Sports. I'll try to post videos there. Um, all my stuff at ESPN.com. Actually, had I would say it's not a football story, but it was one of the probably the most interesting story I think I'll end up writing this year. Ran yesterday on ESPN.com. It's on Ramla Ali, who this weekend will be the first one of the two, one of two women to become the first women to perform box professionally in Saudi Arabia. Her story from being a Somali refugee to being a professional boxer slash activist slash humanitarian slash high-end fashion model for Dior and Cartier is one of the more unique stories I've ever told in my 20 years in this business. So check that out if you can. It was on the front of ESPN.com yesterday uh, on the front of the boxing page as well. So I think that those are my plugs for the moment, but you know, go check out my stuff at ESPN.com. I'm always doing something over there. Well, Mike, I really appreciate you coming on, joining your insights. I look forward to chatting with you in the fall when we get to some real football uh, later this year. I mean, it's all real football. It just doesn't count. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> That's all. Thanks as always, man. All right, man. Have a great one. So guys, we got more to come on today's episode, talking about the addition of free agent wide receiver Keyshawn Johnson and whether or not he can make a bid for the team's roster and practice squad as we continue today's Locked On Falcons podcast. But before we get there, I do want to applaud the Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast family of shows where you get three shows from four hosts, A to Z with Mark Zeno, Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, and ATL Day Ones with Jarvis Davis and Tanitra Batiste, breaking down not only local sports, but national sports. And you can find them all on the same podcast feed, whether that be Apple, Odyssey, Google, and Spotify, uh, as well as on YouTube. And if you check out Locked On Sports Atlanta on YouTube, you'll get the Locked On Braves postcast, breaking down every Braves win and loss this year, as well as the Locked On Falcons postcast. And Jarvis Davis and I will We'll be coming at you guys live Monday night after the Falcons preseason action against the Jets, as we will continue to do so for every Falcons game uh, this fall uh, and winter. So go subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And so let's talk about something a little bit more serious. Uh, You may be hanging out with some friends and you're putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. And as the evening comes to an end, people start to head out and you're thinking of calling for a ride. But, you know, you think, nah, I live nearby. Uh, I can make it home. Okay, right. It's no big deal. But what are the odds that you'll get pulled over? Right. Even so, you know, what's the worst that could happen? You know, your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. You kill someone. 
Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. And however, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. So guys, let's wrap up today's Locked On Falcons. And again, I thank you guys for making Locked On Falcons your first listen. Check out Locked On Hawks, Locked On Braves, Locked On Bulldogs. A lot of stuff going on on the other Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast family shows. So go check them out on your preferred podcast platform, including on YouTube. But uh, let's talk a little bit about Keyshawn Johnson, the wide receiver who the Falcons claimed off waivers. It was cut earlier this week by the 49ers in the first round of cuts. And to make room for Keyshawn Johnson, the Falcons cut undrafted free agent wide receiver Tyshawn James. Um, you know, Johnson, you may recall as the number one overall pick. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that's a different Keyshawn Johnson. This is the sixth round pick for the Arizona Cardinals back in 2019 out of Fresno State. He had a great preseason that initial summer and people were expecting big things given that Cardinals sort of spread attack with all those wide receivers that they drafted that year. Um, but he didn't necessarily live up to those sort of preseason expectations. Uh, early in the season, he did get a lot of production or playing time uh, in 2019 when the Cardinals were utilizing that sort of 10 personnel spread wide receiver offense. But then once Cliff Kingsbury realized that, hey, this is not working, my quarterback is, is running for his life uh, with no sort of pass protection, got to put a tight end on the field. Uh, basically, Johnson's playing time fell off a cliff. He wasn't able to recover. Last year was cut by the Cardinals last summer, spent all of 2021 on the Eagles practice squad then was picked up by the 49ers this past offseason and obviously was cut uh, in the, the initial cut down to 85 players uh, on Tuesday. So essentially what he's bringing to the table here in Atlanta is some added competition on the, on the lower end of the depth chart, and we'll just sort of have to wait and see uh, if he can do and make enough noise over the next two weeks to push for a practice squad spot. I think at this point in time, it's too late in the game for him to be expected to make a push for the 53 man roster. I, you know, we talked about this with Mike Rossi and talking about sort of Auden Tate and Frank Darby and, and these guys earlier on today's episode. But, you know, I think we kind of know who the five, or at least I think I, I kind of know who the five wide receivers that the Falcons will wind up keeping on the roster. And then, you know, you have Jared Bernhardt, who seems like a shoe in for the practice squad. Frank Darby's a front runner there. Geronimo Allison, Auden Tate are certainly in the mix there. So we'll see if like Keyshawn Johnson can make enough noise uh, this week uh, against the Jets, probably getting some fourth quarter reps late in the game uh, and then potentially late in the game against the Jaguars uh, for the Falcons to say, you know what, this guy's worth a longer look. Let's put him on the practice squad uh, and see what he does, uh, you know, over the first, you know, three, four weeks of, of uh, of the regular season and, and see if he's worthwhile keeping. So we'll see that he certainly has the skill set. Um, he was a player that, you know, a lot of people liked uh, in that 2019 draft. I remember watching him at Fresno State and, and feeling like he was a, a solid wide receiver. Nothing flashy. He's not the biggest guy. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the quickest guy, but kind of a solid possession wide receiver. That's kind of what he's been in the NFL when he's gotten those opportunities, but not somebody that you're going to like build your offense around uh, without, you know, him making significant gains to like his route running and, and those types of things. So uh, a player that I feel like can make some noise, given that the Falcons don't necessarily, I know this is a unpopular opinion, but don't necessarily have the strongest group of receivers in the world. So certainly a guy that probably had he been, you know, signed in April, we would have been talking about him as, Hey, he's got a really good shot of making this roster, but kind of this late in the game, it's going to be hard press for him uh, to do so. Tyshawn James was a player that, you know, of the Falcons three undrafted free agent wide receivers, he had been generating the least amount of buzz uh, among Jared Bernhardt and, and Stanley Berryhill. So it, it felt like James was going to be a hard press making it past this next round of cuts when the Falcons have to go down and the rest of the league has to go down to 80 players next Tuesday. Um, so we'll see if Johnson can make it past, past that first round of cuts. You know how it often goes, particularly with these training camp uh, additions. You know, the, the last guy in is usually the first guy out. So we'll see if Johnson can make enough noise in practice over the next couple of days and with these joint practices coming up against the Jets uh, to sort of 
last beyond next week's cutdowns. But uh, the other roster move that the Falcons made was reaching an injury settlement with defensive tackle Bryce Rogers, who they had put on IR last week. Basically, an injury settlement is kind of the only way that NFL teams are allowed to cut injured players, especially if that player doesn't necessarily have a long-term injury. We don't know quite the extent of what injury Bryce Rogers had and probably never will know. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is what often happens with some of these UDFAs that wind up getting hurt early in camp. They they put them, they wave them injured, which basically means if you clear waivers, then you go on injured reserve. And then usually at some point, you know, after that point, between you know the start of the uh, regular season when final rosters have to be made they often reach injury settlements with these players and so the falcons basically decided like basically you know eight days after putting rogers out there on um uh, uh injured reserve that they are willing to um you know move on from him uh and and so you know we'll see if rogers can you know rehab on his own and, and get another shot probably elsewhere in the league next summer uh but you know this is kind of the story of the nfl where you know, a lot of these guys that are on these 90 man rosters, this is their one shot to make the roster. And it's unfortunate for Bryce Rogers uh, or make any any team's roster because they're not going to get that many opportunities. So it's unfortunate for Bryce Rogers that an injury sort of derailed uh, his potential NFL dreams. And so hopefully he'll get another opportunity uh, to play professional football. But uh, usually these stories don't necessarily end well. So um that's it, guys. I appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with Jarvis Davis of the ATL Day Ones podcast talking about uh, what we can expect in these upcoming um, Jets games. And we'll see, you know, on Monday if we can get a guest that's going to be in New York for these joint practices to share their observations. So we'll see about that. Uh, but if not, then you'll just basically hear my thoughts on, on some of the players that I think uh, could make some noise in that Jets game as we uh, sort of report from whatever occurs over the weekend in these joint practices that are on Friday and Saturday, I believe, uh, with the Jets stuff. So uh, if anything major happens, you know, you can expect, uh, you know, potentially, um, you know, an update, a quick video on that, uh, you know, on YouTube or on um Twitter or something like that. So of course, follow me on Twitter or follow the show on Twitter, probably where it's more likely to drop at Locked on Falcons. And of course, on YouTube at Locked on Falcons. So guys, always appreciate your feedback. You know, if you want to send an email uh, to me at Locked on Falcons at mail.com, leave a comment here on Locked on Falcons YouTube channel. Hit me up on Twitter at Locked on Falcons or Facebook at Locked on Falcons. Always welcome for your feedback. Uh, but uh, we'll be back tomorrow with Jarvis Davis talking more about what we can expect on Monday night from the Falcons. And then, of course, Jarvis and I will be giving you our reactions uh, on Monday night after the game uh, live on the Locked on Sports Atlanta YouTube channel. So go check that out. Make sure you subscribe to that so you don't miss it. Make sure you hit that bell, especially uh, so that you know when we go live for that and uh that's it um thank you for making lockdown falcons your first listen uh always recommend your second listen being um locked on fantasy football <laughs> sorry i blanked uh, what, what i was gonna plug uh you know check out locked on fantasy football Vinny Iyer, the host of locked on fantasy football has 20 years of nfl expertise and experience to help you get prepared for this upcoming fantasy season so go subscribe to locked on fantasy football on youtube or wherever you get your podcast. Appreciate it, guys. Till then.